There are many ethical considerations that should influence design, but sustainability is one that is more and more in the forefront of both the minds of designers and consumers. But what is sustainability? What is sustainable design? Climate change and the way we impact on the planet is never very far from the news. And this is what we mean by sustainability, sustaining life on our planet. So sustainable design is the ecological impact that a product has on the natural world. So as designers and consumers, we need to consider how we can minimise this impact. One consideration that you will have seen in many revision guides and course textbooks for design and technology are the six R's of sustainable design. The first of these is refuse. Is this a product or a component that is actually needed? If not, why is it there? Second, there is reduce. So can we reduce the amount of energy, for example, a product uses? And as we live in a more and more throwaway society, is there a way a product can be repaired rather than thrown away and a new one bought? Or can we as designers make sure that we design this in a way that the product can easily be repaired or upgraded? So then we come to reuse. Can a product or a component be reused or repurposed rather than discarded? With a finite supply of raw materials in the world, we need to be considering when we design and consume products, what happens to them at the end of their life cycle? Can they be recycled easily? So finally, we have rethink, or sometimes referred to as redesign. So as designers and consumers, can we think about the way that we're designing or using products to make them less um, ecologically damaging? So understanding the six R's is a great starting point to sustainable design. But what is it we're exactly trying to reduce or refuse? Or what are we trying to do when we're rethinking or redesigning a product? So first there's transportation. We need to consider the impact um, on climate change through emissions or the amount of finite supplies of fossil fuels that we're using. And then there's waste. How, at the end of our product's useful life cycle, can it be disposed of ethically? Or how much waste is produced during the manufacture of this product? Then we need to consider energy. Can we reduce the amount of energy that our product uses through its function or through its manufacture process? Or can we rethink the types of energy used? Can we use renewable sources of energy rather than non-renewable? Can we reduce or even refuse the use of raw materials? Can we rely on recycled or reclaimed materials instead to make our products? And we also need to consider whether our raw materials are renewable or non-renewable. So where possible, can we make sure that we're using renewable raw materials? And next we have pollution. So what pollutants are we putting into the environment that are damaging through air pollution or water pollution as we manufacture or use our product? Then finally we have the social economic factors, such as fair pay or fair trade and working conditions of the people that manufacture the product. We can use the acronym of TWERPS to help us remember these key considerations of sustainable design. So we have the six R's, these actions to help us be more sustainable. Then we have TWERPS to help us remember what it is exactly we are trying to reduce or refuse. But we need to consider that a product doesn't just have an impact on the environment through its use, but throughout its whole product life cycle. So when analysing the sustainability of a product, we need to consider the six R's or the twerps considerations at each stage of a product's life cycle. Starting off with the processing of the raw materials. How much transportation is involved? Are they local materials? Have they travelled a long way? What emissions are polluting the environment? What impact is removing these raw materials from the earth actually having on the um, nature around them. Ultimately, can we reduce the amount of non-renewable raw materials used in our product as much as we can? Have we considered the types of energy used or the amounts of waste during the design and development stage of the product? Then exactly the same considerations through the manufacture process. What is the impact of the distribution of your product? How is it distributed? How many can fit in one particular lorry or truck? 
Can it be redesigned so it fits better, for example? Could it be flat packed? How do the twerps considerations come into the sales and the marketing of the product? Or how it's delivered from the place of sale to the place of use? How much energy is used or emissions or pollution given off during the use or the function of your product? How can this be reduced? And then finally, what happens at the end of its useful life? How can this product be disposed of ethically? How much of this product can be recycled or reused? Has it been designed so that it can be repaired? So when analysing the sustainability of a product, we need to consider the whole life cycle of the product, not just the impact it has during its use. So let's recap with a few revision notes. So if we want to analyse the ecological impact or the sustainable impact of a product, we need to start off with our six R's of sustainability. Refuse, reduce, repair, reuse, recycle and rethink, or sometimes referred to as redesign. So our six R's are the actions that we could take to improve our sustainable impact of our product. But what is it exactly that we're trying to reduce or refuse? Well, here's where the acronym of TWERPS comes in with transportation, waste, energy, raw materials, pollution and our social economic impact. So now we have the how and the what, we need to consider the where and the when. And this is where the life cycle analysis comes in. So we need to consider the impact it has from its initial processing of raw materials through its manufacture and delivery, through its use and function as a product, and then to, at the end of its useful life, how it can be disposed of. Thank you for listening to this video. If you have any feedback, I'd really like to hear it. Or if you have any topics that you'd like um, included in future videos, then please do um, leave comments below.